Hey gang, my name is Will Myers and I help you code cool stuff within Squarespace. Today, we're gonna focus on adding a search icon into our header like this. This is not a native functionality within Squarespace. We have to add some code to do it. I'm gonna give that to you. It's just plug and play, very easy. And then when you or a user clicks on that search icon, it brings you to a search page within Squarespace. Very cool. Let's jump into that right now. All right, first you might be wondering, why can't I just have a search block in there? Well, I have a tutorial that actually shows you how to do that, the search bar in the header. You can add the search bar in the header. However, couple problems with that. Uh, I created this tutorial of almost two years ago and there've been a couple issues that have arisen. First, as you look at your website, this looks good right now, but on smaller sizes, sizes of screens, you'll see that it gets all scrunched up and that doesn't look very good. So first, this isn't great. Second, on mobile, while it is in here and you can kind of like search stuff that way right in here, as we're simulating mobile on a desktop, if you actually test it on your phone, it doesn't work. It gets all jumpy and it's not, it's not a great user experience. So honestly, this isn't a great solution. I hope Squarespace can come out with some better search functionality, just in general, because in general it doesn't work that well, but especially for us in the header, some way to let users search things in the header. Squarespace, if you're listening, please, this is a, a, a huge feature request. But until then, we're going to settle for adding an icon into our header. So first, let's jump into the code. I'm going to paste that in, and we'll, I'll show you a couple of things that you can customize to make it your own. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to show you how the code actually works uh, so you can do whatever you want with it. Or maybe you're just curious about JavaScript and CSS and HTML and want to dive in a little bit more. So those are the two pieces. Let's jump into the copy-paste first. All right, here I am on the back end of my website. Uh, first thing we want to do is go to my, I have a link down below. This is my tutorial page with all the code on it. So the first, let's paste this HTML, which is the JavaScript. Everything between these script tags is JavaScript. Just hit this copy button and then go back to your website, go to settings, advanced, code injection. And then paste that code we just copied right here, right there, and then hit save. Uh, and then initially, you'll see it just kind of pops up right there. So that's kind of what we want. And then on mobile, eh, it's right there. So that's pretty good. And that's all that's not bad. So we need to add a couple little bits of CSS to style it, to get some extra styling, just get our sizes and colors the way we want. So copy this little bit of CSS, go back to our site, go to settings, home, go to design and custom CSS. Now every CSS helps you lay out and style your website. And so that's what these items are doing. Notice this sort of thickened up a little bit. Um, and we also added in some code that allows us to change, uh, add a heading to that search block. So remember, as we click our search icon right here, it brings us to a page on your website. Every Squarespace page, every Squarespace website has this page. Just type in whatever URL is for your website, just type that in and then add backslash backslash search and it will bring you to a search page, although you won't have this search text right there. And so that's what this first bit of CSS is doing. It is adding a search element right above our search block. We're targeting this block on the search page specifically and we're adding a search element. So you can change this to say search here if you wanted. Uh, and then as you save, if you refresh this search page, uh, it might bring us somewhere else. Let's see what happens. Do, 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 search here. So that's how this works. Uh, you can change the color of this as well. I'm just gonna leave it at search and you can change the font size. I would recommend, this is uh, just an equation that sort of helps the, the sizing of font get smaller, stay proportional on different sizes of screens. So if you want this to be smaller, I would say change this maybe down to a two or a one. Um, those are just different ways. Oh, actually don't do that as two or one. Maybe change this uh, VH or something. Just play around with a little bit of those numbers a little bit. I might edit that in the future to make that easier to update. Uh, and then you can also add a color in here, maybe color blue. And again, I'm not sure why that's not updating immediately. I think it has to do with the way Squarespace renders its CSS on these other pages, uh, but that will allow you to help change the color of that. So play around with any of that as you wish. Now these other styles, 
we have two colors down here or two properties on our search icon, the SVG, which is our search icon right here. So first the stroke, this changes the color. I have it set to current color, which means it will take the current color of, of, the, of a more parent element. And right now the more parent elements are gonna be the same as these links right here. So this will stay the color of whatever our links are right here. So I suggest leaving this property value as current color. If you wanted to change it to blue or something, you could change it to blue. Uh, and we're still not, let's, let's go back to our uh, search page uh, just so it can, lot of going back. There we go, now we're blue. So now as we change styles in our CSS, this should update automatically. So as you change this stroke, it'll change. But like I said, I'd leave it as current color unless you want something very unique or special. Our stroke width, this is basically the thickness of our icon. So not how big it is, but the thickness of the icon. So if I went to eight, um, it will get thicker. You see how much thicker that is. So I'm gonna leave that as four pixels. Now the sizing of this icon is going to be the same sizing as whatever, if you had other icons in here. So you can change that in your site styles, uh, your design site styles area. So really I wouldn't suggest changing, adding some other properties that'll change the size here. Uh, and then on mobile, as we look on mobile, we get a little icon right down here. If you want to change this size, this one is a little more customizable. You can change the height and width of these, maybe get that a little bit bigger, however you want, but we'll leave that the same. Okay, so that is it. Um, if you just want plug and play code, you have it. It is all set, you're good to go. Uh, and be on your merry way. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how this works, um, how did we add HTML? How did we add new elements into our header? I'm gonna go over that code. It's gonna involve a little bit of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So if you care, I'll see you there. I'm very sorry I ended that last section in a rhyme. That was unintentional and it won't happen again. That's my promise to you. I can't promise that, but that's my hope. We'll, we'll see what happens. So what we're trying to do now is we're gonna learn a little bit about how this code actually works. And we're gonna jump into JavaScript, learn a little bit about that, take a light little dip our toes into it, if you will, if you want to understand that a little bit more. So what we need to do is add some HTML right here. Why HTML? HTML is the guts of every single website. If you right click on any website, hit inspect, you'll see all the HTML that comprises that website. And that's what Squarespace is writing for us as we add in a block or create a new page or move stuff around. Squarespace is readjusting the HTML uh, and, and it's creating what we see on the page. It's a very advanced sort of website builder. But Squarespace doesn't give us the ability to add a search icon right up here. So we have to do that ourselves. So we're gonna do, we're gonna write some JavaScript that's gonna create some HTML and then inject it right in this place right up here. All right, let's take a very simple example so we can understand what's happening. Uh, we have two block boxes right here. We got two divs. One is our blue box right there. and One is our yellow box. And we're targeting both have the box class which we are adding some CSS right here and just styling it, laying it out a little bit. And each one has a unique class that corresponds to its color. And we are changing the background of that box to uh, this is yellow or this is, this is blue and this is yellow. So that is how just the general setup of this is working. And what we wanna do is in our example with the search icon, we want to create some HTML. It's almost like this yellow isn't there so we want to create that and add it in. So that's what we're gonna do with JavaScript right down here. So the first thing we wanna do is create that HTML element. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna say let, this is creating a variable within our JavaScript and we'll call it yellow box. And I'm going to make that equal to in single quotes, our HTML that we wrote earlier. So you can write this however you want, okay? Next, Let's grab our blue box. Let's target our blue box. Next, we need to place this element somewhere. And the best way to place it is in reference to another element. So I'm gonna grab this as our reference element. Gonna create that as a variable too. So let uh, blue box equal, and then I'm gonna select it using our document query selector. 
selector method. So this is looking in the document and querying the selector that we have in here, the CSS selector. And so I'm going to just query our blue class right there, dot blue. Now, so we have these two variables, nothing is happening. The JavaScript is holding these two variables, but it's not doing anything with it. So let's now add our yellow box within our blue box. And we can use this other method. I'm going to start with our blue box dot insert adjacent HTML. And we're going to insert it. There's two properties. There's, there's two uh, settings we need to add in here. Uh, we're going to add it where, where is it going to go? I'm going to say after the end. And then what is the element we're inserting in there? I'm going to say yellow box right here. And now let's see if this works. Boom, right there. So notice nothing's changed in our HTML, but we have inserted our blue box after the end. Here's the end of our blue box HTML. We've inserted our yellow box basically right there. So what is this after end, before end? The other properties we could do is say uh, uh, before begin. And notice this will be before the beginning of this element right up here. So yellow is now up here, blue box is down there. Basically yellow box goes right there. We can also say after. So this is the beginning. Let's talk about that. This is the beginning of our element. This is the end of our element. So if I change this to after begin, this will go right in here. So let's see what happens blue and then now our yellow box is within it's basically right in here we've basically added this element right in there like that so it's after the beginning of it uh, so this is sort of the general structure we're gonna do we're gonna we need to create an element then we need to target our reference element and then we need to insert in the created element with reference to our reference element, somewhere around our reference element. So that is what the code where I'm about to walk through, what the, that code we pasted in, that's what that code is doing. Now let's look at that code to sort of understand how that works. So I've copied the code from my website and I put it into a code editor uh, just so it's a little easier for us to see what's going on. So you see, first of all, we're broken up into two parts. One, this is the desktop code. And then this is the mobile code. And they have followed generally the same structure. So first, let's look at our desktop code. First, we have our search icon. I'm creating a variable that is the search icon. And so you can replace anything between our backtick brackets. I'm using backtick brackets instead of single quotes. Uh, you can, I have an SVG here. So you can use an S, any other SVG. If you want to use a different, uh, a, a different icon, you would replace this with whatever SVG icon you want. And now we have another, so this is additional. This isn't from what we just learned. This is an additional piece that I've added where I create the container element that holds the icon. And this has the same structure as other elements within Squarespace. And this just allows the, the formatting and layout to work in a little bit more natural fashion. Uh, but you can see in here, I have injected our search icon variable, which is this code, into our new element. So these two combined is our search icon. So this combined is our search icon HTML. Then I'm creating our reference L and this is just what we are, our reference element, I'm sorry, not reference L. Uh, and we are, this is what I'm targeting within our Squarespace website. So this is where it's gonna go. You can play around with this if you want to target something different. Uh, and then I'm just using the JavaScript. We're doing the action with this. So we're grabbing our reference element and we're inserting our search element after the beginning of our reference element. Boom, that simple. And then we're doing the exact same thing on mobile. On Squarespace, our desktop header and our mobile header have are two totally separate HTML structures. They're not the same, just reformatted. It's not the same elements, just laid out in a different way. These are the are totally different. And so that's why we need to basically repeat everything we just did on desktop. We need to repeat that on mobile. And that's what we're doing down here. Very basic thing. Uh, and you'll just notice right here, we're using the same search icon that we have up here. So we have some consistency there. So that is how this works. I hope this uh, helps if you're interested a little bit more about learning JavaScript. Um, and I hope just generally this helps answer your questions about adding a search icon to your Squarespace website. So let me know if you have any other questions and I hope you have a fantastic day.